here's an example of a maintenance job and I guess I'm dealing with machinery because uh, most companies physical assets are machines of some type. This particular job was to replace the bearing inside the pillar block here or plumber block as some, as some people call them. This is a job plan, 16 step job plan to do the job and this is very commonly done in, in companies. The maintenance planner or the supervisor in charge of the crew will put together um, the milestone tasks. These 16 points are milestone tasks. These are the output requirements of working through to do this job. There's something wrong with this particular approach. There's no idea of how to do that work. Now, this is what to do, but no idea of how to do it. So what I've then done, if I just If I just hand that piece of paper to my technicians and I have a hundred technicians that can do that job and I pick any one of those hundred, I have created a distribution of outputs. Unknown what they will be because it doesn't say this one page. So my hundred guys, each one goes out and they will do each of those in their own way to their own time, to their own particular concerns and risks and worries. And if last night was a, a night on the, in, on the booze, mm, today won't be a good day at work. And of course, the distribution then, that means that guy's day is going to be an absolute horrible outcome for the company. Most companies do it this way. They use their trained technicians to say, well, here's the milestones you've got to achieve. Off you go. That automatically produces huge variability because it doesn't tell them how to control that. So what's missing here is how to do that job the one best way. Now I've taken those 16 steps into a flow diagram. In this particular way here, I can begin to see the interaction and the effect each milestone task has. Now if I get that wrong, then that machine will fail earlier sometime in the future. Now if that's not done right or I leave it out or it's very clear now. That's a series process. At the end here is meant to be a long-lived machine with five or six or ten years trouble-free operation. And I don't do that well, or I don't do this well, or I don't do any of them well. I'm never going to get my five or six years. So I've, to help my people, to help my company, and to do the right thing, I should also tell them how to go about getting five or six years trouble-free operation out of your repair job. But that's not given to them. You know, they're, only, they're only given that. That's all they're given. The rest they work out for themselves. Now we overcome that problem with one more step. We actually write job procedures. So job plans do not, de job plans do not deliver job quality. For that, you need detailed job procedures and proof tests throughout the rebuild activities. So this 16 step job plan, when we turn it into a procedure, let me show you what happens. Okay, that's that uh, conveyor pulley there. This is a bit of a, an intro on, uh, on some information in the workbook. I'll then go into actually the details of, of the job itself. I include all the parts and materials and tools they need. I leave that particular diagram in there. I don't expect planners to convert their job plans into a flow chart. I'll leave that there in the example to make the point that any of, all of these are important. There isn't one here that I can afford to do wrong and expect to get five to ten years trouble for operation out of my machine. But that's only the job plan. Now I'm going to do the job procedure. So I start at task one which is done by the technician and it involves preparing for the job to, uh, to make the area safe and clean and, and trouble free and I work my way through this entire job. Remember those 16 milestone tasks all have to be achieved. We just don't know how they're going to do it. Now the guy will do it the way he thinks he's, he's okay to do it which is what he learnt in the last 20 years off 15 other guys. Uh, that's what's going to go through his head. But it isn't necessarily the one best way. It, it might be the one best way. I mean luck can be in our, our favour that day, but it may not be. So we take that job plan and I start doing a job procedure. Let's bring this a little bit bigger. So that 
Now the guy will have to measure the shafts, record measurements, check the shaft is actually round and cylindrical, sufficient for the bearing. He's going to have to do that at different parts of the shaft, both ends of, of that shaft where the pulleys are. You're going to check the parts of the correct parts. Oh, there's calculations required to get the interference, uh, to get the clearance right in the bearing. He has to do a, a mathematical calculation to make sure that he sets up that clearance with feeler gauges. So as soon as he sees a calculation there, we know from human error rate tables, some guys are going to miscalculate. Guaranteed to happen. So I, how do I help my guys get it right is, uh, is an issue that a planner will have to do. You know, my 16 step job plan said nothing about the calculation required to set the clearance. Gee, I hope the guy knows what he's doing, can do the calculations, understands mathematics well enough to do that job properly because I never told him what he has to do. Oh, his years of experience, the 30 year man, he'll know what to do. Well, I hope he does because I don't know what to do. There will be tables to select clearance values from. Now, depending upon the size of the bearing, different clearance between the internal components. Gee, I hope he gets the right line. Yeah? I mean, there is, I yeah, hope he picks the, oh, gosh, I, don't, I won't be there. Yeah? Nobody else but this guy will be there. I hope he gets it right. Uh, there is, he's going to have to check the clearance. Yeah? It has to be spot on because I want to get five to 10 years trouble free operation. And we go on down. Oh, look, another measurement. Uh, this is for the base plates. More measurements. Oh, this is for driving up the tapper tap sleeve on the shaft to get it in the right position so that when the bearing finally is bolted into place, the clearance comes right. I hope he knows what he's doing because I don't know. I don't know how to do it. I hope he does. And on we go. There is, uh, this is the detail. These 16 steps on his job plan, the guy has to do all this. To get to the end of the 16 steps, he has to do all this and get every single thing right. Out of his memory, out of his memory. Base plates, alignment, uh, flatness, installation, positioning, greasing. Gee, is it even the right grease? I didn't say on, the, on my job plan about getting the right grease. I hope he knows what grease to use. It didn't say what to do. Just, you know, oh, he's, he knows what to do. I don't know. I hope he does. We go on down. Oh, look, I've got to assemble it properly, install it properly. Oh, get the alignment of the shaft so I don't damage the seals. Because if those seals are damaged, all my rubbish goes in there and I won't get five or ten years trouble free. I'll get full of water and it'll be down again in three months. Hmm. Seventy-five. Seventy-five tasks to do those 16 milestones. Do you think any human being in the world can go through 75 tasks out of their memory. And yet this is what we asked him to do. You know, we gave him we gave him a piece of paper. Please do this job. And of course he goes. That's his job. I, I, I will do that job. I could never get it right, but you give that to me and say, Mike, off you go. I'll do the best I can. You know, oh, my engineer, I'm an engineer, mechanical engineer, I'll have a damn good idea of what I'm meant to do, how accurate it has to be, how perfect it has to be to ensure that the outcomes are not like this, but like that. You know, I need to be here all the time. You know, I've given the guy a process that automatically guarantees ongoing failures because it doesn't tell me how to do it. How do I control it to be there all the time? If I can do that, then this disappears. I can stop this rubbish going on. But I've got to write the documentation. You know, I've got to write. I've got to write this. Without that, um, nobody can win. Oops, let me get this right. Get to it first. There we go. So yes, procedures, absolutely vital. Because that's the how. That's the how to get the distribution right every single time. And without the how, I just hope it's my lucky day. Now I'm running on luck. My whole business is running on luck. You know, oh, go, go fire good. You know, and what they say these days, of course, is the people make the difference. You know, get the right people for the job. Well, of course. You get competent experts, you get brilliant guys, you know, one in a thousand guy that gets it right in a, every time. How are you going to find that guy? How are you going to keep that guy? 
Well, I'm going to build a business process that doesn't matter who the guy is. Just follow the rules, Fred. Larry, just follow the rules, mate. Here it is. You don't know how to do it? I'll take you to school and we'll get you to do some bearing installation training. And we'll make sure you're good enough to come back to work and do this job properly. I can build a company to do all that. Why would I bother? Well, it all depends what that costs. Because that's money I'm throwing away because I haven't got a process to guarantee the quality that gives me the reliability I need. For 20 years, I just did the same thing as everybody else. You know, all my life, you know, I was taught, I was trained. I would have been, yeah, that's how I did it. 20, 50, 100 years is the, this is the rubbish being given for 100 years. You wonder why we have problems. You've created it. You've guaranteed huge variation forevermore. How do you stop that? Well, do it right. Please, Mr. Manager, tell me what right is. Tell me how to get it right. Teach me how to do it right, and I will do it right for you. But the manager wouldn't even know what to do. Supervisor doesn't know any better. Supervisor gave this document to his people. The planner wrote that out, thought it was enough. The manager ticked it off. In fact, the planner got an, got a, an award that, that month for being uh, the best employee. What a load of rubbish. Yeah, this is the world we've got. We've got this world with massive distribution. Everybody knows it's wrong, but can't work out what to do. Well, what is the right thing to do? Write it down. Create the processes where this always happens. It isn't hard. It takes a bit of time, it takes a bit of investment, it takes a bit of effort. But gee, it's not hard. It just takes time and effort. Piece of cake. But you've got to see it. You got to, you know, the guy's out there, he's busy. It takes him two days. He's, he's, good. he's always working, busy, head down, bum up. But it's pointless. Pointless. Now, I've got to be fair. You know, within this big distribution, there is this area here. Yeah? Sometimes you will get it right even with this way of doing things. But gee, I hope it's my lucky day because I've got no other way except pure luck to have that outcome. And so that's why back when I was 50, looking for the company I was working for, I got the books, threw them away. This isn't working. Now that first slide, the earlier slide, where we've got this model of how to come up with maintenance strategies and activities to guarantee availability, I did all that. It never worked. The company that uses this stuff, they're having breakdowns all the time. They lose millions of dollars each week from breakdowns. Following that strategy. I'm fed up. You know, I'm fed up. Had a gutful. Don't want to go there anymore. It's not working. Yet I know companies have gone from dogs to world class. How do they do it? Procedures. They wrote exactly what the right thing to do is. And then the guys followed it. Did the management of your company, when you realized it wasn't working, did any of them ever think it wasn't working? Or were they just saying, you're doing a great job, this is just the cost of doing business? As long as they saw I was busy, they were happy. The fact that what I was doing achieved no results, that were worthwhile, they thought it was okay. I'm working on improving things. I didn't know how to do that, but I was working on it. Um, and in the end, you know, they were making profits. You know, so they were making money. How do you overcome that, assuming their typical management? Uh, well, this sort of stuff helps. You know, paint a very clear picture of what the world really is. You have to do that because the losses that are outside of the tolerances are built into their annual business plan. Yep. That, that's built into profitability. Yeah. Yeah. Even with the losses, they're showing profitability because it's built into their plan. So it, it has to get shown to them. That's an unknown fact. It has to be proven. Yes, and, and that's Planet Equipment Wellness's purpose. No? That, that's why everything has to be financially based. Uh, as we would expect ourselves. So I'm not blaming anybody, but everybody's missed the point. Not everybody, I've got to be fair to this. Toyota has not missed the point. Uh, GE hasn't missed the point. DuPont hasn't missed the point. Uh, other companies understand. But 
many of them don't know what to do to get, to get there. Yeah, that, that's my experience. Is, my experience is most companies actually kind of see a little light at the end of the tunnel. They kind of see this. They kind of understand. They kind of know that yeah. they don't know how to get there. And the problem is they're really reluctant to spend money to get this mm -hmm. without understanding the correlation. True. And I yeah. haven't personally been able, in most cases, to bring the correlation to them. Yeah. And even when I've been able to get them to take a leap of faith, I haven't been well enough prepared to get... Continue with it. it. Yeah, yeah, to get all the... Yeah. And, and, it's, and it shouldn't be up to us, the consultants. So we're here to assist. The work's got to be done by them. But that procedure for that bearing uh, um, replacement, that took me four days. Mechanical engineer, four days. I've got the three T's in here, good, better, best, you know, so I'm looking for what is the best world-class result. I want to know that because I'd love to get that every single time. In fact, I'm going to build my process eventually to drive everybody to this. Eventually in time, I'm going to build the process with my three T's because the target is that world best is certainly there. I'm going to have a process where in the end, I will create an even tighter outcome. But not there yet. You know? Today's too early for your company to go that, to be that good. You can't be that good yet. You've got to earn that right. But I'm going to build into my processes where you've got to go. And I'm going to help you guys move down that path. Now, if a guy has been, uh, if the technician has been doing it the old way, and he gets this document, and he walks out in the plan where no one is watching, he might just, you know. That's why he's going to have to have a, that's why he had the test. The, the, you've got to measure. We're going to make sure that he measures things, records things. And if the document comes back to me as a blank sheet of paper, I'm going to say, come to my office. What's happening? What, why are you doing this? What are you thinking that it's okay not to follow the rules? That's the rules. You've got one more chance. Oh, I, sorry, I don't know how to do it. Why didn't you say that first? I could have got Fred to do that job, not you. Why didn't you tell me that? Okay, your training plan for the next two months is to learn how to do this properly. Now, there are answers. There's nothing difficult. There are answers. The hard part is being honest and being able to just tell people the truth in a, in a, a fair way. You know, fair but firm. That, that's a good way to tackle it. Fair but firm. So, yes... This is the how. The what. ISO 9001 gives you what's all over the place. Every, every company does their own what. No one ever writes their own how. So PW, how is the vital answer. And that how won't be the best way to start with. It'll be better than what we got. Then guys, Fred, Larry, Barry, John, find a better way. I want you to show me a better way. It's out there, got to be out there, 75 steps all of which can be made better. You try these, you tell me what's the better way. And I'm gonna write that in. We're gonna prove it. Once I've proven it, it's in.